video will run through the Microsoft Teams app. First, you'll need to download the Microsoft Teams app from either the App Store, if you have an iPhone, or Google Play, if you have an Android device. When you've done that, it will ask you to sign in. Use your Office 365 credentials to log in. A few pop-ups may appear, asking for you to allow access to use your camera and your microphone. Press Allow. If this is the first time you're using the Teams app, it will walk you through a few features. Just select Next each time, then Got It. You will then be able to access your Teams account. In this video, we're going to run through the interface of the Teams app and how you can use it effectively. It's worth noting that I'm doing this tutorial on an iPhone XR. The placement and spacing may be slightly different on other devices. First things first. If you click the burger icon in the top left hand side of your screen, you'll see your profile appear. This is where you can see your status. Set a status message and other settings. These items are all editable. If you click status, you can manually change your status. But remember, it will automatically change when you're in a meeting or when you leave the app. You can also change the notification settings. To do so, click notifications. You may need to open settings to change these settings within your mobile phone. Click notifications, then toggle allow notifications. Back to the burger icon. You have a settings option where you can change to dark theme too. Another super useful item is what's new. It's a rundown from Microsoft of all the things that's new in Teams. Coming out of the burger settings now, you'll notice there are a few icons along the bottom of your screen. Activity is literally your recent activity. It will show you what's been happening recently in your Teams. If you want to read more of one of the things shown, simply click it and it will take you there. Whilst we're here, you'll notice that the icons at the bottom of the page have changed. Just like in the desktop version of Teams, you have the option to reply, add a photo, attach a file, at mention someone, you can format the text, and the three dots have additional settings. You will also notice there's an audio icon. If you press and hold that down, you can even send a voice note to the thread. To do so, you must make sure that you have enabled Teams to use your microphone. Now to go back, select the back arrow on the top left hand side. Going back to the icons at the bottom of the page. Next you have chat. This will show you a list of all your recent chats. To enter one, simply click it. As before, you have the options at the bottom of your screen on how you can participate in communication. The difference here is the tabs at the top. If you communicate with this person often, you may have files and more. This is all the files that has been shared between the two of you. Any more tabs you have set up with the individual will show up in more. You also have two icons on the top right hand side, which allows you to start an impromptu video call or audio call. Now back to chat. At the top of the page next to recent, you have contacts. This is where you can find your favorites. You also have the option top right to create a new chat. Enter the name of the person you wish to chat with. If you already have an existing chat with that person, it will appear in full. This is also where you can create a brand new chat with the new person. The icon in the center is Teams. This is the list of all of the teams that you're involved in. It is almost identical to the desktop version of Teams. You may have some teams hidden. So to add them in view, select See All Items and tick the ones you want to be visible. Alternatively, you can access this by clicking the settings cog on the top right hand side of your screen. The three dots next to the team name are the settings for that team. You're able to do things here like view members or leave team. You can use the drop down arrow on each team title to view the channels within that team. Select the channel you wish to go into. You'll be able to access conversations, files and all other tabs just as you would on your desktop. Once you're in a channel within a team, you can create a post by selecting new post. You can either type a message you wish to post, record an audio clip or attach a file. A small reminder, if you want to respond to something someone has already written, 
Do not create a new post. Press reply on that thread. This makes sure that your response is attached to the right thread and the conversation is all in one place. The icon next to the settings cog allows you to create a team, browse a team or join a team with a code. You can also search by selecting the magnifying glass in the top left hand side. The great thing about this feature is that Teams will pull everything that it has to do with that one particular word and put them into categories to make your search easier. For example, if I type in CCAT, which stands for Cybercrime Awareness Training, it will show me all the messages that CCAT's been included in, people and files. Going back to the icons at the bottom of the screen. Next, you have Calendar. This will sync with your Outlook Calendar and give you a rundown of all the meetings you have scheduled in for that day. The important thing to note here is this is how you join a video chat with your team. When it's time for you to join a chat, simply select join. Then select join now. And the last icon at the bottom of your screen is calls. This is where you can see a history of all of your calls and your voicemails. Teams is a great way to stay connected to your team members and having access to it through your mobile phone means you can take it on the go with you and never be disconnected from your team. 